I'm back. It's Saturday, February 15, 2020. So I want to share with you how, where is Harry Anz? Before I go to how to protect yourself online. It was a Saturday morning when my cell phone rang. It was from an overseas phone number, not one I recognized. I figured this had something to do with Harry. So I answered the call. It was from an emergency room doctor who informed me Harry was very ill and needed an operation. I honestly don't recall the details of his alleged condition because of course I knew. I asked why he was calling me and not Harry's mum. He replied they couldn't reach her. And he asked if I knew him. I said, no. To which he replied, he listed you as an emergency contact. Well, I told the supposed emergency room doctor that I knew of someone by that name, but had never met. And the, the doctor just tried to urge me so badly to send money for the operation or he could die. I said it wasn't my problem and hung up the phone. It was over faster than it began. I reported the account to Facebook and blocked this Harry Rich. I changed my privacy settings so only friends of friends could see me and send friend requests. Since then, I've alerted two other friends of potential fake accounts. Both times, they admitted they did not know the person who, of course, sent me a friend request. So when you see that you have someone in common, look and then if it's only one person, then go ahead and contact that person and ask them, do you know this person? They sent me a friend request. I suggest that you go through your friends and delete anyone you haven't met in person just to be safe because they can see everything you post and have access to your friends. Not a good thing. I also changed my settings so only my friends see them. I rarely post publicly, except now for this podcast. It's worked for me so far. Although I did have someone hijack my LinkedIn account for a few weeks a couple of years ago. I'll do a separate post about that in another podcast of Heart and Home. That one didn't end well for a friend who unwittingly replied to an investment offer from whom he thought was me. And that person was in the online security business. So it goes to show that not anyone can fall to an online scam when card con artists target your friends. I also would suggest you do a search for your name on social media sites you're on to make sure no one has created another account using your name. I actually found a fake account that used one of my brother's recent photos to create a Facebook account that showed he was a doctor in Texas. We reported it to Facebook to have the account removed. But if you don't search, then you don't know. Two other warnings. Try to avoid public Wi-Fi and stay on your own network. I use Verizon and have an unlimited data plan. Especially be careful in hotel hotspots when traveling. The second thing you should avoid are public charging stations. Keep away from them. Always use your own charging brick and plug into an electric wall outlet instead. With regard to Harry, I did go to the local police station, by the way, to try to file a complaint. But I was told that since there was no financial loss, there was no need 
to, to file anything and they could, couldn't do anything. I had to let it go. Although deep down, my investigative reporter instincts kicked in. I wanted to track this elusive character down and stop him from harming anyone else. And I wondered how many other women he was working on. I also wondered who the man in the profile pictures really was. Perhaps the victim of identity fraud? I would have liked to have met the real person in those photos, oddly enough. What was serendipitous about the entire transaction was that the profile of the person used on me had always been my dream guy. Tall, light hair, British, or maybe Canadian. But no one knew that except me. I never told anyone who my ideal person was, except in my own personal exercises that I had done in privacy of my own home when I was in my 20s and 30s. easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain how I found out about this. It's free. It's on your app store. There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right now from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Please, I urge you, don't waste another minute. I wasted three years. I attended all kinds of events to learn all the steps. I was so confused and it was right here. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Do it now. As I mentioned in yesterday's Heart and Home podcast, investigators issued a Valentine's Day warning about online dating scams. Only this involved a man scammed by a woman who swindled $200,000 from an 80-year-old Oregon widower through an online dating service. According to the Oregon Department of Consumer and Business Services, an unidentified person posed as a Florida woman. They spent several months speaking on the phone under the pretense of, you know, engaging in a long-distance romantic relationship. The widower got involved in what he thought was an art gallery in Florida. The museum and bank statements he received, it turns out, had been fabricated. By the time it was over, he had made a series of payments over five months to overseas bank accounts totaling more than $200,000. And because he wired the funds overseas, it made it difficult to track the money and identify the con artist. Don't send money if you don't know the person. If you're looking for love online, you could find it. That's a thing today. And it's worked for many couples. But please be wary you could also find yourself falling for a con artist who will rob you blind. It happens all the time. I repeat what I said in yesterday's podcast. The Federal Trade Commission received more than 25,000 complaints about romance scams in 2019. According to the data released this week, Victims reported losing $201 million to these scams last year. That's up nearly 40% from 2019. 
from the year before. For the past two years, more money has been lost to romance scams than any other type of scam reported to the FTC. Now, romance scammers post their fake profiles on popular dating websites and social media apps. They also target people through direct messaging on social media sites, and some victims lose hundreds of thousands of dollars, including their life savings. Now, another story about a divorcee in Chicago who got conned into giving $200,000 to a man she met online. He tricked her into sending him all her savings and half of her retirement money, plus the proceeds from two loans she took out for him. The scam was all online via text or email. Remember, that's how they tricked me. Although the elderly tend to lose more money in a romance scam, anyone can get fooled by a fake profile and stolen photos of attractive men and women. It happened to me with Harry Rich. It could happen to you or someone you know. This is the ultimate con and these people are good at what they do, says the Director of Fraud Victim Support at the AARP Fraud Watch Network. You've never met them, but you've seen a picture You've had long conversations by text or on the phone. They say you're the love of their life and you believe them. How to know it's a scam. Okay, so this is the the real nuts and bolts and the meat of today's podcast. First, red flag. They quickly move off the dating website and begin texting each other numerous times a day. Even if you ask for pictures and a copy of a driver's license, it could be fraudulent. Another red flag. Within a few weeks or a couple of months, they bring up marriage. They want your home address to send flowers or a gift. And of course, they want you to send more photos. Ask to FaceTime them. If they don't have an Apple iPhone, Facebook's Messenger app allows free calling, including a video option. If they make excuses, that's another red flag. Next comes the business trip. You're led to believe they are successful and you will have a good future together. Take it slow. If you're moving too fast, that's your next red flag. Because soon, The money conversation is coming. It may be for a loan, which they'll pay back with interest. It's for both of your future when you're married. Please don't send anything. These scammers are willing to invest a lot of time getting to know you. Once they have that rapport, it's easier for them to move in and con you. Now, There's another type of con that I didn't talk about, which is the sugar daddy con. This is a different relationship uh, scam. Fraud.org says sugaring sites have millions of users, including fraudsters. They pretend to be a sugar daddy or sugar mama and promise to pay off your debts. But all they want is your credit card or banking information. Romancescams.org has more instructions. Now, finally, I want to share a former con man's tips for protecting yourself from fraudsters. There is a man. You probably know who he is. You may have seen him in the movie um, by Steven Spielberg, a 2002 film called Catch Me If You Can starting Leonardo DiCaprio. The man is based on the life of Abagnale. Does that name sound familiar? 
a teenage con artist in the 1960s who ultimately got caught and served five years in prison. Have you heard of him? You probably heard of Catch Me If You Can, but Frank Abagnale, uh, that name might not be at the tip of your tongue. You know, global cost of cybercrime is almost $600 billion a year, according to a 2018 report. Um, and that staggering figure doesn't include the billions lost to scams and ripoffs that are not internet related. And not everybody reports these crimes as well. So Frank Abagnale, who I uh, want to tell you more about, the former con artist, he turned to a security consultant. Can you believe it? I mean, what better person to tell you of how to know how a con man thinks than a former con man? A former professional imposter and the author of the best-selling memoir, Catch Me If You Can, as well as The Art of the Steal and Stealing Your Life, Frank Abagnale is one of the world's most respected authorities on the subjects of fraud, forgery, and cybersecurity. A world-renowned consultant for more than four decades. He lectures at the FBI's academy and field offices more than 14,000 financial institutions, corporations, and law enforcement agencies use this, his fraud prevention programs. When Abagnale wrote his book, which was released in 2019, he says, I was amazed that millennials are actually scammed more often than seniors but seniors lose more money because they have more money. In a social media world, we tell everybody everything, where we're going, our children's names, our parents' names, our wives' names, what we did yesterday. And so the fraudsters, they use that to create phishing emails or scams that sound real. For example, I know you all know about the grandparent scam. And he touches on this in his book. It's a very common scam, he says. The phone rings. The caller ID says it's the police department. You pick up the phone. They tell you they arrested your grandson for a DWI. That's a drunken disorder. They give you the grandson's name. They tell you what kind of car he was driving. They tell you he had a passenger, which was his girlfriend. They know the girlfriend's name, and you know the girlfriend's name. They tell you the parent's name. Obviously, they've gotten all that from social media. But you figure it must be the police department. How would they know all of that information? Well, it's convincing. They ask you to wire the money for bail to get your grandchild out. Don't give anybody bail money unless it's a bail bondsman. It's a trick. How to spot a scam. He says that every scam is different, but most of them have a few things in common. Red flags that we should be looking for. As he points, points out in his book, one of them is the sense of urgency. I need you to do this right now. Abagnale says, don't make it easy for someone to steal from you. Educate yourself. You can't rely on the police. You can't rely on the government. You can't rely on the bank to protect you. So be proactive. Educate yourself about these things so you don't get scammed. In that 2019 book, Scam Me If You Can, Abagnale shares common warning signs that signal you're about to be scammed. Here are two. Request for action. If you're told to do something, such as write this down or tell me how many bank accounts you have, there's a good chance you're being played. Once con artists get you to do something, they have taken control of the conversation and put you in a more vulnerable position. 
And the other one that he mentions is the request for untraceable payment. If you're required to send a payment via wire transfer, a gift card, or some other untraceable source, beware. Legitimate businesses have legitimate banking details that can be verified. If you like the Heart and Home podcasts, I hope you'll consider being a listener supporter. There's a link in the show notes. I'm Sabah Fakuri for the Heart and Home podcast.